In this bonus video, what we are going to do is generate a distribution of numbers that are non-normally distributed, so non-Gaussian distributed, and then transform that distribution into a Gaussian distribution. That's using an algorithm that has three steps here. That's steps two, three, and four. Step one is actually not part of the transformation algorithm. This is just the first step that you want to do in this video. And that is to create a particular type of noise values called Brownian noise. Now, you are going to learn a lot more about Brownian noise in a later section of this course. I think it's in two sections for now. It's called something like the spectral colors of noise, something with spectrum and noise and colors. Uh, but very simply, the way you create Brownian noise is you start with white noise, which is just numbers drawn purely at random from a normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution, standard dif uh, distribution. And then you compute the cumulative sum over all of those white noise elements. So the cumulative sum is this. So it means that time point t is defined as the sum of all of the data points from the first time point up to the current time point. Now notice here, this is math notation. So we start at one, but in Python, you start at zero. Now, there is a function in the NumPy toolbox called, uh, I won't tell you what it's called, but there is a function in NumPy that will compute the cumulative sum for you. So you actually don't need to implement this as your own function, although if you're curious to, you know, you, you can try. It's not so hard to do that. Okay, it's important when you're creating Brownian noise that the mean is zero. It doesn't matter so much what the variance is. You can leave this as one as a default. Okay, so, uh, so, so uh, create some Brownian noise, and then you want to rank transform. And the rank transform function is in the stats module, which we were using for a couple videos in the uh, beginning of this section. So rank transform the data. Now, the rank transform data is going to vary from zero to the number of data points that there are. So uh, what you want to do then is, is rescale the rank transform data to a range of minus one to plus one. So the smallest number is minus one, the largest value is one. And here's a little hint. It's easier, so to get to step three, it's actually easier first to transform uh, to the rank transform numbers, to, to transform those to be from zero to plus one, and then rescale it again to go from minus one to plus one. Okay, and then once you've done step three, what you wanna do is apply the inverse hyperbolic tangent. Again, that is something that's in the NumPy toolbox. I will let you figure out what is the name of that function. But this is generally what the, this is like the math name for this function. You can figure out what the code word for this function is, or the, the function name. Okay, so once you've done this, we wanna visualize what, what this algorithm is actually doing here. So here we have the original data. This is the Brownian noise time series. Here is its histogram. So you see the distribution is definitely not Gaussian. And here we have the transform data. And here you can see the histogram of those data is definitely Gaussian. It really looks like a Gaussian. So that's pretty neat. We changed the data a little bit. You can see it's obviously not the same, but the, you know, the large scale contours are preserved. And, uh, but we totally changed the distribution from uh, non-Gaussian to Gaussian. Now, because of random numbers, do not expect your results to look exactly like this. This histogram, you should get a histogram that looks like this, but your time series is gonna look different. The histogram here will look different because Brownian noise is really chaotic. It's different each time you generate the uh, noise time series. Now, what the last thing we wanna do here is look at the relationship between the original data and the transformed data, the Gaussian distribution transformed data. And that we can do with a plot that looks like this. So we have the original data here on the x-axis, the transformed data transformed. I see there's a little typo here. Please do not copy my typo. You should spell your y-axis label correctly. Okay, and you can see this is a monotonic function. So we're not changing any of the uh, relationships uh, or the, the sort of uh, scaled relationships between the different numbers, but it is a nonlinear relationship. So we're stretching out 
at the low end, we're stretching out the high end, and that's basically how we get from this distribution to this distribution. All right, so switch to Python. Uh, good luck working through that, implementing the algorithm in the previous slide and generating these plots. And I will see you in a moment in my version of Python. So I didn't tell you exactly how many data points to use, but the graphs that I showed had somewhere around 500. So let's go for 500 data points. So we are going to generate a random rand n. So this gives us Gaussian distribution of a number of random numbers. And then we are going to compute the cumulative sum. So if you uh, generated your own function for the cumulative sum, then that's really awesome. Good for you. And uh, you can feel free to post your your solution to the uh, Q&A if you want to show off a little bit. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. You can do this through the function cumsum. Okay, and uh, let's already plot this. Let's plt.plot just to see what this thing actually looks like. So here you see it looks like it goes down and up and down and up, uh, but that is not reliable. Every time we regenerate this, it's going to look totally different. Sometimes it goes as like this long-term trend going down. Sometimes it has a long-term trend going up. And uh, yeah, Brownian noise is, is pretty unpredictable. Okay, so... Uh, so so that's getting us started. Now what we want to do is rank transform the data. So that is in the stats module that we were using earlier in the course. And the function is called rank data. And let's, let's just print this out and see what this looks like. So y is, you can see it's all integers. And this is basically just telling us the rank transform of the data. So this tells us that the first data point in x is the 350 or element 350 when it's sorted so that means that you know where is zero around here here's one uh i don't see the zero but it doesn't matter so this data point here whatever data value that is in vector x in the brownian noise x this is the second to smallest data value that we have in our entire data stream actually maybe it's the first maybe uh, rank data actually starts counting at one. Let's see, numpy.min. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So normally Python claims that counting at zero is the best way to go, but I guess for rank data, it actually starts counting at one. Anyway, so now what we want to do is normalize this. So I'm gonna normalize it first by dividing by n plus one, and that's going to give us a minimum. Let's see, let's print out the min and the max. So that's the minimum. And here we have the maximum value. Now I said that you should normalize this first to a range of zero to one. And if you did it, that's fine. It turns out that you're going to get at least one infinite value. So one non-finite value in your results, which isn't really a problem. And for reasons that I'm not going to get into uh, this, the algorithm for converting to a Gaussian is slightly, slightly more involved than the simpler version that I showed in the slides. So in fact, we want to avoid having exact values of zero or one in here. And that's because those will turn into minus infinity and plus infinity when we try to take the inverse hyperbolic tangent. Okay, so uh, but if you did it at, from exact zero to exact one, it's also totally fine for this video. Okay, so now we have our data that range from zero to one, and we need them to range from minus one to plus one. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm gonna start by multiplying this by two, and let's see what this gives us. So this now gives us values that range between zero and two, and we want values between minus one and plus one. So what would happen if we say minus one here at the end? So now this gives us a range of minus one to plus one. And again, you know, it's not exact. It's a little bit larger than minus one, a tiny bit smaller than plus one. Okay, so this is one way to do it. And another way we could do it would be to scale this down uh, and then multiply it up. So that has uh, the same effect. Actually, sorry, it should be minus 0.5 here. Uh, that has the same effect. We're just, you know, pulling this out and turning that into a one 
outside of this equation. So there's a couple of different ways that you can go about solving this. All right, very nice. So now I'm going to write y equals numpy dot arc tan h. So this is the inverse or the arc hyperbolic tangent. And we will see in a moment what effect that has on the results. Okay, so this actually is the algorithm. We've now just, or actually it's even just these two lines of code. So this is the algorithm that converts our non-normal distribution into a Gaussian distribution. So the next thing I want to do is generate a couple of plots. And I want these plots to go in a two by two subplot axis grid because I want the time series plots on the top and the histograms on the bottom. So let's, uh, let's, let's create some, uh, let's create a figure with axes, a matrix of axes, and this is going to be uh, two by two and fig size equals, uh, let's try eight by eight. And just as a reminder, I'm sure I've said this before, but the exact numbers here, I believe they're supposed to correspond to inches, but uh, this varies by screen. So, you know, don't assume that the numbers that I use here are also going to be ideal for your screen. So feel free to play around with that and find out what looks good for you. Okay, now, because this is a two by two grid, we actually need to access these as uh, two elements. In fact, we can even look at this, at uh, what X is. So you can see this is, well, okay, it's kind of hard to see, but here you see, uh, you see double square brackets here, which means that we're working with a NumPy array and then inside that is another set of square brackets. So this is two. This is the first element and the second element of one row. And then we have the second row here, and that also contains two elements. It's just confusing to look at because these are huge. These are just these like really, really long labels here. Nonetheless, let's get back to business. So we want to plot. In the first subplot, we'll just plot x and we'll set the title here to be set title this is going to be the original data and i'm going to keep plotting this thing piecemeal to make sure it's still looking good okay original data and actually i can already see this looks a little bit tall maybe i'll set this to be seven and nine i think it will look nicer if it's a little bit stretched out a bit more horizontal like this okay so that looks good and then i'm going to copy and paste this is going to be y and this is transformed data and now we don't want to overwrite the plots that's the wrong thing to do although it's actually you know still kind of interesting to see how much the scales change but uh, in fact we want this to be over here so what is this index here well it's the first row and the second column here that's this subplot over here so that means we want row zero and column index number one make sure that looks good yeah that looks good and again you see the y-axis scales are different but in this case it's it's actually good to have different y-axis um, scales here because that allows us to focus on the shape of the two distributions as opposed to the exact numeric values all right so that's for the raw plots and now we want the histogram so this first histogram is going to go down here. So this is the second row or row column uh, index one and the first column. So column index zero. So this is X one comma zero, uh, a dot hist and X. And I will set the, the number of bins to be 40. And we also need a title here. So X one comma zero dot set title. And I'll also call this original data. Let's see how that one looks. And also interesting that it's bimodal. So you don't always see that it's bimodal, like what I showed in the video. In fact, just out of curiosity, I'm going to run this again to see if we still get another bimodal uh, distribution. Oh, yeah, it's also again here bimodal. Okay, nonetheless. Uh, okay, then for the really exciting part, which is the histogram of y which is the transform not t y the transformed data transformed data and i was slightly embarrassed that there was that horrible typo in the 
uh, in the slides. So I just want to check that I have all my ends in here. Okay, let's see. And this is in the second column. And beautiful. So we get totally non-Gaussian distribution transforms into a basically perfect uh, Gaussian distribution. And the data are not identical, but they, they haven't really changed so much. All right, so then, actually, I think here is where I made the typo, wasn't it? It wasn't in these plots. So now I'm, I'm starting to sweat now. I'm getting nervous that I might make exactly the same typo. Let's see what happens. plt.x label is original, and plt.y label is the transformed. Okay, did I spell that correctly? <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun to record these videos. Okay, this looks pretty good. And we still see that there's a monotonic relationship between them. Monotonic means when one goes up, the other one goes up, but it doesn't have to be linear. So monotonic can be linear or nonlinear. This is clearly a nonlinear monotonic relationship between the original data and the however you want to pronounce that data. So that is the end of this bonus video and the end of this project. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you feel like you've learned something about uh, working with pandas data frames and seaborne visualization and and various statistics including uh, t-tests and regressions and at the end we did some uh, some interesting transformation into gaussian distributions this is the kind of thing that you might have to do in uh, some machine learning or deep learning applications where some models assume that data are gaussian distributed